and welcome to beautiful rural friends. In today's video, I'm going to be sewing my sweet cones. I love them. They are one of my favorite summery crops. Really easy to grow, low maintenance. They almost always do really well. And the farmers here in France already started sowing their sweet corn seeds. So it is the perfect time for us here uh, in France to start sowing ours. But sweet corns are a warm season crop. So when we sow our seeds, the temperature of the soil needs to be warmer. So the sweeter the sweet corn, the warmer the soil they need. They need at least 10 degrees and above of temperature. But if you don't have farmers around you and you don't know the temperature of your soil, I will definitely recommend to wait until middle end of spring and then sow your sweet corns because the last thing we need is the temperature gets really bad and it rains a lot. The seed gets rotten, uh, insects eat them and in the end we end up with no sweet corns. So definitely I will wait until the end of spring uh, or when the lower temperature is higher and then uh, I'll uh, sow them. So I'm going to take you uh, I'm going I'm going to take you to the square where I'm going to uh, sow my seeds and from there I will show you everything. This is the square I'm going to be sowing my sweet corn seeds. As you can see it needs a little bit of weeding, cutting the grass a little bit around it, make it nice and neat and tidy so when we bring our compost then everything can be nice and uh, wonderful. So as you can see here our soil is quite uh, drainy soil so we need to put some comp compost on it and uh, the tools I'm going to use are the trowel and this diba. This tool is just amazing, works superb and it is a godsend for me. I'm going to leave a link down below if you're interested because it is superb. And yeah, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is cleaning the square, making it nice, clean, everything pristine and nice. Sweet corns are really easy plants to grow. So when you sow them in, honestly, they just need a bit of moisture because they are warm season crops, so they don't need a lot. Swiss corns are very easy plant to grow, really easy to grow. They just need some water, they need some moisture on the soil, obviously, so they can germinate and grow. But they don't need a lot of water. It's just when you sow them, if it's not raining for like days and days, I will definitely, you know, water them a little bit and give them some moisture. Sweet corns are a wind pollinated plant. They need to be grown in blocks instead of row. But if you decide to grow them in row, make sure to have plenty of rows, like a lot of row together to maximize pollination. How this works is the pollen from the tassel male flower lands on the silk ear shoots of the female flower in order to create a good crop. So that's what we want. We want to maximize pollination. So here I have my square nearly done. I'm gonna clean a little bit around there of the edges, make a neat and clean. Well, Andrew's mowing. We need to keep, keep the grass down because Oliver is very allergic to grass. That's why uh, you can hear mowing. <laughs> we do a non-digging garden. It is so easy, guys. It's just, on the previous videos, I've explained how I do it. In winter when uh, we crop all our vegetables and uh, we get all the seeds, what we do is just get our black plastic, put, put the plastic on top of the strips and then put tiles on top so the plastic doesn't fly. Uh, fly. And then that's it. And uh, in spring when we take them out, with a little bit, it's really good because you almost 
don't have any weeds, you just a couple of them. And then we put some new compost, our compost there. I'm gonna take you afterwards there. Put some more compost and that's it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, guys. So I will be making uh, a video when uh, I harvest them and I'll show you how to crop them and everything. But I'll talk a bit, talk a little bit about it. Just cropping them is very, very easy. Three weeks after the tassels appear, uh, you know you can start cropping them and when the tassels turn dark brown. And then easy to crop, you just you hold the, on the stalk, hold on the stalk under the ear of the corn and then you twist, twist it towards the ground and that's it, so easy. The best way to eat them is just, uh, you know, after you crop in them, eat them straight away because they really quickly lose their vitamins and flavor. The only other way is to eat them straight away or to put them in your free fridge, freezer and save them to keep the flavors and then the vitamins. Yes, I'm growing my sweet scones the way the farmers do it and they do it the way it works. So when I walk around the fields, you can see the fields packed of sweet corn plants and all together because for a reason to maximize pollination, that's why they do it. So this is the right to do it and this is the way I'm doing it, the way the farmers do it. Well, we have a lot of fields around us and they're all packed, obviously not now, but in summer, packed and packed of uh, sweet corn plants and they do it for a reason. So this is the way I'm doing it and it is the right way to do it because they need to uh, pollinate in be in, uh, between each other. The other thing guys is if you sow uh, a species of sweet corn, a different sweetness of sweet corn, make sure to uh, sow them in like different place. Like for example, if you sow them in here, give quite a big gap to the other species of uh, sweet corns because what we don't want is this cross pollination and sometimes they do not do well so they can be very starchy and not good so make sure if you're doing like different sweetness of sweet corns to give like quite a big gap to the other sweet corn so yeah and i'm going to be growing one species of sweet corn so i'm going to put them all in here and yeah, so we're going to go to the compost. So this is our compost. It's been decomposing for over a year. And we made this compost when we came here to France. So we did it very quickly so we can have a place to compost our, you know, peeled, vegetable peeled and eggshells and all this. So yeah, we still need to do some more work in this compost. We need a top for the rain and everything. But for now, it's doing really, really well. We have quite plenty of them. And then we're going to do more separation to make them better to like rotate and in small, you know, squares so we can rotate them properly. It is very crumbly and dry, but it's not a problem. It's really, really good. Uh, I'm going to like break it down properly with the spade and then uh, mix it with the soil on the square there and then afterwards I will put water on it so it's no problem. So I'm going to start uh, getting some of this compost. with the soil and the new compost so fertile so good full of nutrients so good for the 
soil and for the plants. So we mix it in this properly. And I'm going to like water it a little bit because it's not that dry. I thought the compost is very dry, but it's not. So I'm going to water it a total, just a little bit. And then when I start sowing, then it's uh, moist already. And then we can put some more water on top of it again. And give it a little bit of water. And I'm going to take it to the polytunnel because I have my seed in there. Welcome to my polytunnel. Everything is growing amazing here. I've uh, uploaded videos when I started sowing my uh, broccoli and kale seeds. Honestly, they're growing superbly now because it's so warm and nice inside here. So we're gonna wait a little bit longer and then um, put them out when the frost, we don't have more frost, and then they can go out in a minute. I've been reporting them from the small pots into a bigger pot, and then from there, when the weather's better, I'll make a hole outside. Don't worry, guys, I will be, ma I will be filming it and showing you and everything, making a hole and then po uh, planting them outside. But honestly, the polyton is doing superb, and our body is flowering already. It's looking amazing. It's so pretty. The flowers are amazing. So I came here to get my uh, sweet corn seeds. And here I have tins full of seeds. And obviously every year when we get, uh, when we harvest all our vegetables, we save all the seeds for the next year. But this year we got a lot of uh, new seeds, all the varieties, because we want to try all the varieties of vegetables. So we got a lot of new seeds in here and it's just amazing. I can't wait to try them all. So we have plenty, plenty of seeds in here. And oh, here I have my sweet corns. They came with this uh, pile of seeds. We got a lot of varieties of vegetables. I'm so excited because look at this, it's looking amazing. And I can't wait to plant them outside and they produce vegetables and uh, cropping it's just I love cropping so here I have my sweet corn seeds in this packet and in here I have uh, four eight nine ten eleven eleven seeds so allegedly eleven seeds they should give me eleven plants so I'm gonna get my seeds and uh, we're gonna go outside and the key here is to plant them in blocks so I'm gonna start from the middle and then I will be making like a square so the then all my seeds can be together and then the pollination can work properly and if you make them in rows make sure to make plenty of them and make it's gonna look the same like a square here I have and I'm going to use my deba because it's just wonderful this. As I said, I'm going to, I'm going to leave a, a link down below if you're interested about this uh, deba because it's so good. And here we are. So I got my deba and the space is uh, like the size of your hand. So you put your size, you put one seed in the middle. The depth should be like around five centimeters. So we make a a hole in like this, five centimeters, around five centimeters. And then we put the first uh, sweet corn seed in here. And then from here, approximately, we're gonna like measure it like uh, the size of our hand, around 10 to 15 centimeters in each side. I'm gonna make here around 10 to 15 centimeters, the size of your palm. One in there. Okay, next. Just to make uh, the work easier, if you get your palm, put it like that, you know, it's uh, the, the space in between the seats, easy. Third, I'm gonna show you very 
zoomed in, then you can see. Looks like a square. And then, uh, because I had the 11, we have nine and then 10, and then 11 in the middle. We want them to be as together as possible. Now it's covered, and I'm going to give them a little bit more water. And then after that, if uh, we don't have rain for days, we give them a little bit more afterwards. And uh, obviously the soil needs to be moist so our seeds can germinate and then grow. Here we go. So we're gonna leave them. We're going to water it a little bit like that. Et voila, guys, it's so, so easy. They don't need maintenance. They will grow, they will take around six weeks until we have a plant like this. You know, about 20 centimeters plants, approximately depend on the temperature and on the seed as well. I'm gonna take you inside my polytunnel and show you all our seedlings because I've uploaded videos uh, of our polytunnel and uh, the plants I've been uh, sowing and our seedlings are just amazing. The plants are growing superb. Our body is flowering. The flowers are amazing. Look at the flowers, just so beautiful. Awesome, awesome flowers. And yes, yeah, so in here we have yellow courgettes all doing amazing. We reported the yellow courgettes into a bigger pot so they can go grow bigger. And everything, origins are doing amazing as well. Calabre, here the broccoli, I've been repotting them from this size pot into a bigger pot. So I put like two, I'm gonna show you in the video. Some of the pots uh, I've uh, sown like a couple of uh, weeks ago, they were ready to be repotted. So I've been repotting my broccoli, the two small pots into a, a bigger pot so they can have more space to grow a little bit bigger because we still have frost and the temperature through the day is beautiful, but at night gets a bit cooler so this is why we're reporting them leaving them in the polytunnel and then when the weather is fantastic then we can uh, put them outside and i think it's gonna be soon so i'm gonna show you some of uh, a footage that i've been reporting my broccoli and honestly one of the things i need to say is when you report when i report my small pot into a bigger pot uh, i normally do is i put two in a bigger pot and you need to put them in the pot, put them very firmly in and try to uh, keep them straight and proper tight, proper press the soil in, the compost in and keep them straight. But sometimes when you report plants, it's quite a bit of a shock for them. So the, the leaves sometimes they can be a bit like floppy, but guys, it's not your fault. It's not, it's not our fault. It's just sometimes it's a big of a shock for them. So you do your best, put them in, put a lot of compost, proper stick them in and press them in. Try to make the stalk as straight as possible. And then you give them water and then the next day they will get up again and all the leaves will raise up and everything will be fine. So they're doing amazing. Everything is just looking superb. We did the same thing with the kale. We reported them into a bigger pot. And honestly, everything spinach. Oh my God, I can't wait for the spinach. It's just amazing. Kohlrabi makes amazing plants. This is our uh, lettuce, cauliflowers we got in winter and almost honestly they are Jurassic. And here this lettuce is just already flowering and we have seeds already. We're gonna leave it a little bit longer and then afterwards we're gonna save the seeds. Coriander, rocket and parsley are doing amazing. Look at them. Superb. Oh, gonna get a bit. So tasty. I love it. I love, love coriander. And in here, oh my God, we've been having salads with mustard, purple frills there, and then the mustard gordon. Oh my God, amazing. So tasty, so good. 
and ghost pepper hot they need more time because they are quite a warm plant so they're gonna stay here inside the polytunnel so it's not a rush for them really peppers are doing amazing they're growing we have here lettuce already oh i can't wait for the lettuce so easy to grow guys and then in the end of the year you can save all the seeds for the next year we have so many seeds from the last year and a lot of vegetables the uh, green broccoli was from last year's and we saved the seeds and we have broccoli again for free so good here i have the sweet potatoes and on my previous video uh, they got frost and honestly look at the leaves they're growing again as i said if the roots are fine don't matter if their leaves uh, got frost, today will come back. The same with the yellow courgette. If you've seen uh, uh, my previous video, the yellow courgette got frost on the leaves and look at them. They're looking amazing. They're going, they're going back again. And the sweet potatoes as well. And then we have other things in here as well. So here we have the tomatoes we've just uh, sowed them beef pear and cherry and obviously we've sold them from seed so it's gonna take time they're gonna be growing in here inside the polytunnel the same as aubergines because of colorado beetles and we don't want more colorado beetles because they are undestructibles nothing gets rid of them nothing the only way is picking them up or encouraging bats and that's the reason why I'm not growing potatoes. If you didn't know, because I've talked about it on my previous video, but if you're new to this channel, it's just a quick, brief word about it. I'm going to take you to the rhubarb because honestly, they are Jurassic. The first video I uploaded about uh, when I did the so the when I did the sowing of my seeds. Uh, was when we had snow and obviously all our rhubarbs were covered with snow and now honestly they are looking amazing it's just so good as i said in the in the previous videos uh, when they establish is just they get massive and uh, obviously you eat the stalks of the plants when they get like reddish then you know they are ready and then when they get massive 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 you can in the end of the year when the plant you know all the leaves and the stalks um, you eat all the stalks obviously and then you have the crown you can chop the crown into halves and then you can have two plants and then you can uh, plant one plant in one side and then you can plant the other plant uh, the other half of the plant in another size and then you have two plants instead of one when they get massive you can chop it into halves and they are looking amazing look at them a couple of weeks after and then they are massive look at them <laughs> so cool and i can't wait for my uh, rhubarb pie <laughs> Sassify mammoths is doing amazing amazing since the last time uh, I filmed the Salsify Mamas, it just doubled, tripled on size. Look at it, amazing. And when, it, when they establish, the stalks are looking massive now. But in the end, when they have a lot of uh, roots and they get massive, 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 you can eat some of the roots and they grow again. Or some perennial plants and the rhubarb, amazing. And we have here already um, chicory growing in here. Very nice leaves, very peppery. I love it in salad, in sandwiches and in everything. Our last year's uh, beetroot is getting amazing. Look at them. All the leaves are growing superb. And in here we have the spinach, but we've chopped them so they can grow better. Sometimes it's better to chop it all the way down and then they can produce more leaves. It just works amazing like that. 
And here you can see our cabbage and um, the cabbages and our broccoli already started flowering and in a minute you can see the seeds we're gonna be <laughs> saving the seeds for next year and the flowers are amazing you can eat the flowers they are very sweet and nice and then we're gonna wait a little bit more when they dry properly the seeds and then we're gonna collect all the seeds and next year we're gonna have uh, cabbages again for free amazing they look superb and uh, the same with the broccoli as well here we have the broccoli this is our leek spot we have so many leeks coming already we've grown them we've uh, uh, grown them from seeds obviously you can see them and here we have the cabbages these uh, cabbages as you can see they are flowering and we're gonna collect all the seeds in a bit and then take them out collect all the seeds and then we have more place so we can uh, sow all the all the plants in there as well so in here i have my red rug i've talked about it on my previous videos but if it's the first time you're watching this video these plants grow two meters tall and gives you so much food all summer so it's superb low maintenance awesome looks so pretty as you can see it is amazing and then in the end of season in autumn you just chop them when they have flowers and they seed you chop them leave them all lie on the same strip we put the plastic on them tiles so we can keep the plastic down and then that's it in spring we take the plastic off we put some compost on and they grow again it's just amazing look at them so cute and the color is just so appetized. And if you like this video, please thumbs up, share it with friends and family because it will help massively this channel to create a wonderful community together. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome, awesome day. Take care and see you soon.